Okay, hi everyone. We are going to now start our first lesson in this unit, which is finding relationships in triangles. Our previous video was about the um, terms that we're going to see a lot of this unit. And so today we're going to focus in on triangle mid-segment and triangle mid-segment mid theorem. So again, please have some colors available next to you. Um, I can't tell you how important it is to um, have your brain find those relationships because th sometimes these segment notations just aren't enough to catch our eyes with things. Okay, so getting started, uh, let's review triangle mid-segment. A triangle mid-segment is a segment connecting to the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So for example, in this figure, segment DE is the triangle mid-segment. Again, it's in the term or in the name, it is a segment. So I would take a different color and go ahead and highlight D to E as, um, as the mid-segment that they are talking about here. Keep in mind that um, we are noticing D A, uh, sorry, B A has been split in half and B C has also been split in half. Those notations are really, really important. So for example, we had segment D E as the triangle mid-segment. Next, our triangle mid-segment theorem states something very important for us to move on with the work for today. If a segment joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, then the segment is parallel to the third side and half as long. I will show you what that looks like in just a second. Um, finishing off the theorem here, using the diagram above, if segment DE is a mid-segment of triangle ABC, then AC is parallel to DE. Okay, so let's look at what that means here for a second. So <clears throat> I'm going to use purple again. DE I already put in purple here. You can see on top. Um, AC, which is the bottom baseline here, <coughs> is parallel to DE, meaning... We can actually put those little triangle symbols on our triangle to denote that this top line, or I shouldn't say top, this middle line is parallel to the baseline. Now remember, anytime we hear parallels in geometry especially, we have to think about, okay, there are some angle relationships that are going to form when parallels come into play. Um, okay, so we've determined that AC would be parallel to DE, and then the second part here is where um, my algebra fans you will like. We also have an equation that allows us to solve for missing parts because, interestingly enough, the relationship between DE and AC is that DE is going to be half of AC. So you can also write that in the opposite where AC is two times DE. So I'm going to, again, use this as an example, very, very simple example. You don't have to write this down, but you can just pay attention. If the length of DE is 4, then let's say I put that here. DE is 1 half of AC, right? That means AC would have to be which value? If you said 8, good job. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we have to remember when it comes to triangle mid-segment theorem, um, that the mid-segment is parallel to the line opposite it, and that the mid-segment is half of the line that it is also opposite, that parallel line. Let's see what that looks like in the work. So for question one, it says identify all pairs of parallel segments. Have your colors out and ready for this one. I'm just going to randomly start from the top. So let's go from QR. I see QR has been split in half, meaning this is going to be the mid-segment. What is opposite and parallel to QR? That would be WY. So I'm going to start writing this. Q, segment QR is parallel to segment WY. Okay. Now you can get another color out. I'm going to go down here from R to S. I notice, it's not on the line. From R to S, I notice, okay, this is going to be annoying. Hold on. From R to S, I notice that this is, 
uh, the longer segment, right? The opposite segment of it that looks parallel is WX. So I'm going to say segment RS is parallel to segment XW, right? And I can actually put the little triangle marks there. I should have done that with the blue one as well. So that shows me two parallels, two parallels. Okay, great. Next color, I'll use red. The only line that's left on the bottom part here, QS, the opposite line that runs parallel is XY. So segment QS is parallel to segment XY. Okay? And then again, I can put the three parallel lines because it's it's a notation it's a congruent not a congruency notation it is a parallel notation that tells me if i have three here then i should have three here it's its partner okay so go ahead and do two um i'm gonna try something different with the notes here i'm actually gonna put the answers out but i want you to pause the video create the statements and then unpause to check your work so pause now I'm assuming you're back, so now you can check your work. I don't have them color-coded or anything, but if you have questions about this, you can ask in class. Okay, next problem we're going to do together is number three. So here we start diving deeper into our understanding. If L, M, and N are the midpoints of the sides of P, Q, R, and P, R, this segment here, equals 46, P, Q, this segment here, equals 40, and LN equals 17. Find each measure. So we have to find each one of these missing measures, right? So here I have to use my triangle mid-segment theorem, um, which tells me that the mid-segment is actually half of its opposite parallel side. Um, also, I think the notations are important, so I'm going to put them in. All of these are mid-segments, right? Like L, M, and N are all mid to those larger lines. So that means PL is congruent to LQ, QM is congruent to MR, and PN is congruent to NR. So out of good habit, I'm just going to put those notations there. You should as well. Okay, that being said, I'm going to bring my colors out. So again, I'll just start with this left side. PQ is 40, right? The opposite mid-segment line, the one that is parallel to PQ, is NM, or in this case, MN, right? It, the, the order does not matter here. So what is half of 40? Oh, it should be 20. Let me get another color. Then I have QR here in purple, the opposite parallel line to that, which is its mid-segment, is LN or NL. Um, well, they didn't give me the, the length here, right? But they did give me LN. So I know that LN is half of QR. That would mean QR has to be 34. All I did was double it, okay? And you know what, let me get rid of this because I don't want it to get noisy while I'm trying to see, have you guys look at this for the first time. Then last but not least, I have my bottom line, PR, right, which has the value of 46. If I look at its opposite parallel line, which is the mid-segment here, well, what is half of 46? It is 20. So LM would be 23. And then lastly, they ask for <laughs> MR just for fun. Let me use a highlighter for that one. They just want to not trick you, but they just want to keep you on your toes, I guess. Um, what would MR be? Well, remember, QR here, the entirety was 34. And if this is congruent to this, that means it's half of it. That means MR also has to be 17. Okay? So I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and do four. Very similar to this, my first suggestion to you is to 
um, label all these sides that they've given you, find the relationships, find its parallel opposites, and then find the answer. The only thing new that they've thrown you is part D, which is perimeter. But remember, perimeter is just adding up all the sides, all the major, major sides of this triangle C, D, E. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Pause me and check in when you're done. All right, I hope that went well. Um, again, I am not going to show the work for these, but I do want you to have the answers available if you're working through with the video. Okay, we are going to work through five together. So you'll notice that five is a different format than the previous ones. That's fine. Um, you also notice that it's kind of like on the side. The mid-segment is not just completely on the top, but we can algebraically solve this as well. I know that this segment here that I've bolded is the mid-segment because it cuts the uh, that line in half and it cuts the bottom line in half. Okay, well, this is going to be half of its parallel opposite. <coughs> so that means if I had this twice over, right, if I had both of these, both of them would equal that segment. So the way to create this expression is saying, well, two times that half value is going to equal the full value, okay? So from here, quite simple, 14x equals 17x minus 18. Uh, I can subtract 17. Oh, I just had 14 by mistake. 17 on both sides. I'm left with negative 3x equals negative 18, and negatives and negatives, x equals 6. That is all that this problem asked of us. Um, yeah, so go ahead and try six. Remember, this segment is the mid segment because I can tell that both the sides it touches, that it unites, have been cut in half. And that is the only reason I know that it is the mid segment. Two of these, two of these combined would equal this. So go ahead and pause me. Okay, if you got x equals 14, you did a great job. If not, star this question, um, question mark this question, something, so that you can bring it up in class or see me privately. All right, you're also going to do 7 if you flip the page. I'm going to have you work on that um, independently. Pause me, and I will put on the answers in a second. Okay. Those are the answers. Again, if you need help figuring out why, star, question mark, something. Let's look at eight. We will do eight together. It is the same style of those questions, but um, I figured let's end it with one more that we've done together. So PQ here is the mid-segment because it's cut P or RS in half and it's cut ST in half. That means I can go ahead with my... Um, theorem stating that this is half of this. Well, if it's half, if I doubled it, then it would be the same as my opposite parallel. So 2 times 15x minus 17 equals 23x minus 6. I get 30x minus 34 equals 23x minus 6. Subtract from both sides. 7x minus 34 equals negative 6. Add 34 to both sides. 7x equals 28. And x equals 4. Okay? Um, however, oh, one thing I did miss here is that it's asking for RT, right? So that means I find RT. RT is here, the bottom baseline. And I plug x in. So my final answer will have to be the plugged-in version. And I set that up by labeling RT, 23 times 4 minus 6, and segment RT equals 86. There is no unit, so you can just leave it 86. All right, cool. Moving along. I hope this material is not too difficult. I think it's a really good mixture of algebra and geometry put together. Um, the rest that we're going to do together are... 
Ooh, I forgot to cover 12, but that's fine. <laughs> There's no work there. Um, 9, 10, 11, 13, and then I'll have the answers for 14 and 15 out for you. If you feel like you do not need any more guidance for this, that's fine. If you need to skip through, by all means, do that. Okay, looking at 9, I am going to color code here because I'm having a lot of information show up. So MN, I'm going to put in blue. MN is here. NO in pink. NO is here. And MO in orange. And MO is here. They're all the inside mid segments. Find the perimeter, meaning adding up all the sides of triangle JKL. Okay. Now, one might think, where do I even start with this? Uh, honestly, you can start wherever you want. I am going to go ahead and start with the terms that have X's in them because I want to get rid of the X's as soon as possible. Um, so, Again, I know that since MO is the mid-segment, it is going to be parallel to KL, which means it is half of KL. So I can say 2 times 6x minus 1 equals 13x minus 10. I got 12x minus 2 equals 13x minus 10. Do the algebra. I get negative 2 equals x minus 10, add the 10 on both sides, we get 8 equals x. Now, what do I do with that 8 at this point? I think we should all know that. Um, plug it into where you see x, okay? That means that the entire length of KL will be um, 13 times 8 minus 10, and segment KL will equal 94. Remember, the end goal here is to get the perimeter. So this is going to be 94, right? I am only missing two more sides. So now I need JL down here. Luckily, I have the mid-segment opposite and parallel, and that is 49. That is only half of its opposite. So what is 49 times 2? Be 98. Okay, uh, let me get back to pink. Let's find pink. Okay, then we're in the last side we're missing is JK or KJ, doesn't matter how you say it. Its opposite parallel is 42. Remember, 42 is only half of that opposite longer length. That means that KJ or JK is going to be 84. So now I take all of those, do 84 plus 98 plus 94, and my final answer is 276. Again, there's no units here, so you can just write 276. If that is not something you're understanding, again, please, please, please mark it so that we can talk about it. Okay, looking at 10 here, 10, 11, and 13, um, start talking about angles, and remember, <laughs> Angles will pop up always. This is geometry. We have to deal with that. I also told you at the beginning of this lesson that when you have parallel lines, angles are inevitable. So it's asking us to find the measure of each missing angle. So my missing angles are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, without giving too much away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create the parallel lines um, we know that since this is the mid-segment, these are the parallel lines, right? So let me draw that out. Please make sure you're doing that. Uh, you're corresponding and doing that on your own end. And once you see that, I'm hoping something sparks in your mind in terms of, hmm, I might have seen this before. And if not, let me see if I can jog your memory a little bit more. Would you be able to solve for angle 2 from here? You know, if you said yes, that's good. Um, how would I go about doing that? Remember, it's on a line, and a line's degree is 180. So we should be thinking 180 minus 127, which equals 53 degrees. So angle 2 is solved for. Angle 2 is 53 degrees. And I am actually going to go ahead and cross it out so that we can... It in so you can see it at least from your end how it looks like 
with just 53 here. Okay. Now, the other thing is, okay, now I have to figure out, well, what are the other angles? Okay, so this is where we start thinking about transversals into play. The sides of our triangles are the transversals. So I'm going to do that thing where I take my... I just take one transversal and I'm going to take the entire figure that I have just because I have an iPod. Oh, uh, iPod. iPad. You guys don't even know what iPods were. That's wild. Notice that if I move it around like this, I should be able to find some of these relationships that we covered in unit one. This is also where wax paper comes in really handy. So if that was 53... This bottom angle here, that one was angle 1, would also be 53, right? Because they are corresponding angles. So angle 1 is also going to be 53 degrees. Okay. We're getting closer. Um, I'm going to get rid of this one. And while I'm doing that, you guys should be thinking about, okay, well, what other relationships would I be able to tell from here? Get rid of that transversal. We're now looking at the bottom transversal line, right? <clears throat> that 53 is no longer going to help us with this bottom side because it's a different transversal running through the parallel lines. But if I copied and pasted this, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to write that this was 59. This was 59. Okay, now I can go ahead and shift that. Think about it this way. If this is 59, what would this angle be? Right? These are also, <coughs> excuse me, corresponding angles, right? They're in the same location, just one step up or one step down. And I believe this was angle 4, right? So 4 is also going to be 59 degrees. That being said, can we find that supplementary angle next to it? Because it's on a line. You should also be thinking 180 minus 59. What is 180 minus 59? Do the calculation. If you said 121, you would be correct. Okay? Okay. Now, that being said, I'm going to get rid of all of this, and I'm going to plug in every piece of information that I know. Um, so let's get a 4 and 5. I'm going to cancel that out, and I'm going to cancel that out, and write in its place what 4 was. 4 was 50. No. Oh, which one was it? Four was 59 and 5 was 121. Okay, now the only one that's missing is angle 3. This is where we use triangle angle sum theorem. If I have two angles in a triangle, I can find the third one. So we would set it up like we did in the previous unit. 53 plus 59 plus the measure of angle 3 equals... 180 degrees. Once you do the algebra, the measure of angle 3 should equal 68 degrees. And there you have it. All done. I know parallel lines aren't a lot of yours favorites, but honestly, once you get a once you get a hang of them, um, it is so, 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 so easy to spot. So I'm going to have you, actually, I lied. I want you guys to do 11 yourself. Um, you can pause me now. I'm going to go ahead and start writing the answers without the work for 11. If you're not getting it, then come see me during class. Okay, pause me. I hope it worked out. If not, again, come see me. Um, five. Now, five, I actually already have the answer here for you, but I just, I'm going to very, very briefly talk about how I got that. So remember, this mid segment here is parallel to the bottommost point, right? This line I'm going to use as the transversal because 
that is where the angles I'm concerned with are. So if I took this, uh, actually, sorry, I forgot to write in the terms 7x plus 4, 10x minus 11. So if I took this and I made it look something oops, like I'm more familiar with, I can then say, well, this angle's relationship to this angle is of corresponding. Corresponding means that they are congruent or equal to each other, which means I should be setting 7x plus 4 equal to 10x minus 11, ending up with x equaling 5. No decimal. Okay, so um, I will do three, and then fourteen and fifteen. I'll I'll give the answers to. <coughs> Last problem together. Um, again, I'm gonna go really slow here, just because I know this is new. And if you're watching this without having done it in class, uh, I want you to have all the tools. I know that this line is the mid segment because it's splitting my left side in half and it's splitting my right side in half, right? That is a telltale sign that it is mid-segment. It is also parallel to the opposite base, right? I've put my little triangle symbols to denote parallel. Because they're parallel, I'm also going to extend them beyond the figure. It allows my eyes to catch more things. The transversal that I'm concerned with is the one on the left because that is where my angles are. My angles are 5x plus 2 in this corner and 11x minus 30 on this corner. Some of you already see it and that's great. But those of you who don't, maybe we need to like take notes on this again. If I let this look like that... Right? Actually, even if I let it stay like that and I just get rid of the triangle, that's okay. Think back to the notes from unit one. This angle and this angle have a very special relationship. No, they are not corresponding. No, they are not congruent. These are actually um, interior, ooh, what was it called? Consecutive interior. These are consecutive interior angles. Okay? Meaning that they don't equal each other. Actually, you add them up to equal 180. So the equation here would be 5x plus 2 plus 11x minus 30 all equals 180. I combine like terms and I get 16x minus 28 equals 180. Add 28 to both sides, and I get 16x equals 208. Divide both sides by 16, and x equals 13. Okay. So be very careful of the relationships um, between those angles. Like 14 is not a consecutive interior. 15 is a consecutive interior. That's my hint to you while you solve them. So I want you to solve 14 and 15. Put me on pause. Um, and I will, I will give you the answers to 14 first. Right? So this one was asking specifically for CBF. So CBF was this angle here. If you plugged in 9 into here, you would get... 83. Okay, pause me again. Um, go ahead and do 15. Remember, it's asking for RTV. So RTV is this angle here. Find X and then plug that in. Pause me. Okay, checking answer. Here we go. There you go. If you got it, excellent. Um, that's fantastic. If not, don't worry. Like, just be proactive. Just ask me questions in class. Come to tutoring Mondays and Wednesdays after school. Um, please use your resources for this, right? Um, I don't mind giving you the answers, the ans but the answers aren't going to help you understand anything if you don't know how to do it yourself. So at this point, I think I should have told you to do four and five. Um, that is the practice associated with these notes. And then the next lesson, we'll pick up with perpendicular bisector theorems. 
Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out here. Um, I know the videos are getting slightly longer, but you also know that you can kind of pause and move at your own pace as long as you are holding yourself accountable for that. So have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.